Good evening. Uh, good evening. Was that Alderman Bud Mads? Yeah. Good evening. Testing. We got you, John. <clears throat> We've got about another minute before we begin. There's still folks entering the waiting room. Okay, as soon as I get these last two individuals admitted, three and one alderman, we'll go ahead and wait a couple more minutes here. Just when you think everybody's in the meeting. Okay, I have 7.31 on, on my clock here for uh, November 24th. I'm gonna go ahead and call the city council meeting to order and any other who attends, I will watch the waiting room and let them in. So at this time, I'm calling the meeting to order and I'm gonna ask that you remain muted, but please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And with that, we'll go ahead and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And then we will go ahead and take a moment to let the <clears throat> members of the council unmute so the clerk can call roll. Cannon. I'm here. Bud Metz. President. O'Brien. Here. Veneziano. Here. Sassy. Here. Yes, Present. Tonica. Here. That makes seven present and no member absent. Therefore, we do have a quorum and members of the audience are reminded <clears throat> that these proceedings are being recorded for current and future broadcasts over the city's cable television channel, as well as other media outlets. We do have others still trickling in. And while they do, I'll remind members of the public that public comments will be afforded to those members of the public who are joining us on this conference line, as long as you provided the contact credentials and the subject matter for which you'd like to speak about before the deadline, which is noted on this evening's agenda. Members of the public who are present at city council chambers listening to the meeting, you will also be afforded the opportunity to provide public comment in accordance with the procedures that are applicable to public comments at an in-person meeting of the city council, which is namely members of the public must have signed in before the start of the meeting, which is at 7.31 tonight. As always, written comments that were submitted prior to the meeting will be read as well. So jumping right in, 
for the first portion of the agenda. It seems as though we have uh, two sets of minutes to approve from previous meetings. Uh, the first set is from October 20th. It's a committee of the whole meeting. Is there a motion to approve these minutes? Thank you, Alderman Sonoika for the first and Alderman O'Brien for that second. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Seeing none by show of hand, the question is, shall the minutes be approved? Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Hesse. Yes. Diestas. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Mance. Yes. O'Brien. <clears throat> yes. Feliziano. Yes. That makes seven in favor and none opposed. These minutes are approved. This moves us on to the second set of minutes, which is from the November 10th city council meeting. Um, is there by show of hand a motion to approve these minutes? Thank you, Alderman Cannon. Thank you for the second, Alderman Diastis. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to these minutes? Seeing none, the question is, shall the minutes be approved? Will the clerk please call the roll? Diastis. Yes. Sonica. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Mitz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Bediziano. Yes. Bessessi. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, those minutes from the November 10th, 2020 City Council meeting are also approved. Now, it looks like we do not have any reason to deviate tonight. I don't have anything for the mayor's report this evening. Are there any ward reports from any member of the council? I'll show up here. Alderman Cannon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to bring it up, but I'll give it a shot. Um, reading the notes from uh, some of our meetings last week from some of the commissions, I noticed that our planning and zoning board only had five members at the meeting. If I recall, if I remember correctly, I think that the item they were talking about was postponed last time because they weren't. I'm wondering why so many members are not showing up to those meetings. I know some people have other schedules, but um, when you only have five people out of nine, or I guess we have one empty spot, uh, that's concerning to me. I guess the other thing, Mr. Mayor, I would ask is, I think someone needs to talk to the member who voted no because they don't agree with video gaming. I don't think that that's the purview of planning and zoning to have a personal thought as to whether they like something or don't like something. I don't think that's part of the, it should be part of their, their process. Um, lots of people might have many different opinions about a lot of different businesses in town. That's not what they're there for. They're there to either approve or not approve the planning and the zoning. So I would ask to have someone, either you or someone from our staff, contact that person and tell them that that's not acceptable in the future. Thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Alderman Cannon. As to the absences, uh, absenteeism, I can't speak to why or why not they haven't been able to attend. I do have a couple more individuals who recently reached out requesting that their nomination occur. And uh, this happened last week. The other two I had fell off. Um, their commitments were just too... Uh, demanding at this time. So hopefully this can fill that one vacant seat, but that still won't cause or correct the bigger problem, which is having a majority of people uh, being absent during a meeting. So we'll look into that. And again, it, it is definitely inappropriate to project individual opinions or positions when you're representing a community for a body. Uh, so we'll take that into consideration when communicating with those folks. And if you could, after this meeting, uh, please send the name of the individual to me, since I'm unaware of it, uh, just to have a, a conversation. Just, the, name's not, the name's not been published, Mr. Mayor, so I, it's, I don't really know the need. I don't need to know the name. It just okay. was the name. It's just one person voted against it. Okay. Then I'll do some homework, and uh, I'll, I'll look into who that was, and we'll have Thank a conversation. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Any other award reports this evening? Okay, good. 
bad, indifferent. All right, uh, that would bring us to the next section, which is opening up the floor for public comment for the next 20 minutes. However, there aren't any signatures on the sign-in sheet for public comment. So that will bring us moving forward to pending items. The first one we have is line item A, ordinance number 20-51. It's to approve an ordinance confirming and extending the state of emergency within the city of Rolling Meadows due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Is there a motion by a show of hands to adopt this ordinance? Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Alderman Cannon for the second. Is there any discussion on this by show of hand? Seeing none, the question is, shall the ordinance be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Renoika? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Bud Matz? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Veneziano? Yes. Pasesi? Yes. 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 With seven in favor and none opposed, this ordinance is adopted. Moving on to the next one, line item B, ordinance number 20-52 amend the alcohol liquor code to approve a class GA liquor license for video gaming for IF Management Inc, IF Management Inc, doing business as Picante Bar and Grill at 3989 Algonquin Road. Is there a motion by show of hand to adopt this ordinance? Thank you, Alderman Veneziano, and thank you, Alderman Fiestas for the second. By show of hand, is there any discussion on this item? Out of discussion here. Start with uh, Alderman Cannon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to make an amendment and uh, include in new language for this ordinance um, by the recommendation that came from uh, from community development. I don't have the verbiage right in front of me, but I think we all got that today. In today's, I'm sorry, I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, the, the actual verbiage, but we would not. We, we could approve the liquor license, but they cannot use the liquor license until the building is, is done to our satisfaction and the building permits has been been um, approved and all the work has been completed. This this company has had in the past done build outs without permits and we're late on a lot of fees. So we wanna make sure that that behavior doesn't go into the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Before I ask for a second on your motion to make an amendment, does staff have this language available? Uh, if we are to go go down this road, I want to be able to have this at our disposal here. Yes, Mayor. It's actually on the Council Action Summary. And just to read it, the recommendation from staff is for Section 3, that Picante is hereby granted a Class GA liquor license. The new verbiage addition is said license to be provided by city staff only after Picante secures from the city a certificate of completion for interior building modification associated with the GA license. Then going back to what's in the ordinance right now and that city council authorizes the increase of the total number of liquor license in that classification by one to allow for the granting of this license. Thank you, Manager Crumstock. And yeah, I'm not gonna try and go through this packet on Zoom. Uh, scrolling is inefficient. Um, so we have the language available, as Manager Crumstock mentioned, as noted in Section 3. Um, is there a second by show of hand to Alderman Cannon, Alderman Cannon's motion for this amendment? Alderman O'Brien, I know you had comments, but are you making the second for this? Yes, sir. It was the same comments as Alderman Cannon, so I'll second, and I don't have any comments. Okay, perfect. So while we're on this... Um, this motion for amendment, are there other comments from other members of the council on this? Okay, if there's no discussion on the amendment here, let's go ahead and have the clerk call the roll on um, moving this amendment forward. Will the clerk please call the roll? Sure. Cannon. Yes. Bud Matz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Viziano. Yes. Vesesi. Yes. Fiestas. Just want to clarify, this is for the amendment, not for the motion, correct? Correct. Correct. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, that amendment moves forward. So now we're back on the original with the amendment 
incorporated into it? Is there any discussion on this? There were quite a number of hands up before. No more hands? Okay, if there's no more discussion on this, then it's to take a call on the vote as amended. Will the clerk please call the roll? Admit. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Assessi. Yes. Yes. This. Yes. Noica. Yes. Cannon. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, this ordinance is adopted. This now moves us on to our next item on the agenda, which is the ordinances in for first reading. Um, this consists of one line item C, ordinance number 20-00, and it's approving an ordinance confirming and extending the state of emergency within the city of Rolling Meadows due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Is there a motion to move this ordinance to second reading? Thank you, Alderman Diastis for the first and Alderman O'Brien for the second. Is there by show of hand, any discussion? Alderman O'Brien, your hand is up. No, sorry, my mouse wasn't moving to put my hand down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. All right, then if there's no discussion, you're seeing none, the question is, shall the ordinance be moved forward for second reading? Will the clerk please call roll? O'Brien. Yes. Feliciano. Yes. Assessi. Yes. Diastis. Yes. Sunoika. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Matt. Yes. <clears throat> With some dramatic pause from Alderman Bassesi and seven in favor, none opposed. This ordinance will be moved forward for second reading. This now brings us to line item D, it's new business, motion to approve payment of bills on warrant. Is there by show of hand <clears throat> a motion to approve the warrant? Thank you, Alderman Bassesi, and thank you, Alderman Diastis, for the second. Is there any discussion of the bills on warrant for November 24th, 2020? Seeing none, the question is, shall the warrant be approved? Will the clerk please call roll? Veneziano. Yes. Assessi. Yes. Diastis. Yes. Sunoika. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Budman. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, the warrant is approved. Let's scroll down on both monitors here so we can move on to the next section, which is the consent resolutions. And this consists of two items, items E and F. Does any alderman wish to remove an item from the consent agenda for resolutions? Seeing none, then the chair declares it in order for one motion to consider the two resolutions in a single motion without debate. Is there such a motion? Thank you, Alderman Diastis. And thank you, Alderman Sinoika, for the second. That leaves these two items. Item E, resolution number 20-R-109 is to acknowledge and accept the fiscal year 2021 Rolling Meadows Library budget Line item F, resolution number 20-R-110 is to adopt the fiscal year 2021 City of Rolling Meadows budget. The question is, shall the two resolutions be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Assessi. Yes. Yes. This. Yes. Sonica. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Max. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Louisiana. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, those resolutions are adopted. <clears throat> this now brings the council to other business and reports. I do not have any appointments this meeting and I do not have any mayor's proclamations. Is there any report from the city clerk this evening? Not tonight. Thank you. 
And this will bring us to city staff reports. And the city staff reports, first item up are the community items of interest. And for this, I will defer to Manager Crumstock. Floor is yours when you're ready. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Obviously, the first thing that we do want to mention is this week um, is the final week for yard waste collection. And again, yard waste collection does end on Saturday, November 28th. And that is uh, specifically right after the Thanksgiving holiday. Regarding that, City Hall and Public Works will be closed on Thursday, November 26th and Friday, November 27th in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. Refuse collection will be delayed. Thursday routes, routes will be collected on Friday. Friday routes will be collected on Saturday. We do want to mention that Rolling Meadows is again partnered with the United States Marine Corps Reserve to collect toys for children in need through the Marines Toys for Tot program. Residents may deliver new unwrapped toys here at the drop boxes at City Hall at 3600 Kirchhoff Road or at the Rolling Meadows Library 3110 Martin Lane. And toy donations are accepted through Friday, December 4th. And please look for one of the green toters. Um, they are set up this year for the Toys for Tot program. We do want to mention on Saturday, December 5th, the Rolling Meadows Police Department will be conducting a food drive outside of the Jewel Osco food location at 3000 Kirchhoff Road between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. All donations that will be collected this year will be going to the Palatine um, Township Food Pantry. So again, it's greatly appreciated for all donations. And if you cannot make it to the Saturday event, you can always drop off here at City Hall on Thursday or Friday, and we will make sure that it gets into the collection and delivered to Palatine Township. We do want to mention that the city and Vitalin have scheduled another blood drive for Wednesday, December 23rd from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. here at City Hall in the council chambers. Due to need for social distancing, appointments are really needed for this event and may be scheduled by contacting Vitalin at 877-258-4825. The wearing of face covering, specifically a mask, is required. Walk-ins are only accommodated if no scheduled appointments are present in the council chambers. We do want to mention that City and Swank and the Elgin Recycling have are conducting their holiday light recycling program here at City Hall. We have two boxes that are wrapped in red saran wrap, if you want to consider it that. The collection boxes are located here at City Hall and only here at City Hall. Items that are accepted include mini lights, Italian lights, C7 lights, C9 light, rope lights, LED lights, and all those kind of items that are put in there. All colors and lengths are accepted. Um, the city cannot accept garland, live greens, wreaths, or other non-recyclable items for this holiday light recycling program. This program runs all the way through February 12th of 2021. We do want to mention, even though we had snow this morning, um, leaves are still falling, but as a friendly reminder to residents, please do not dump or blow them into the street or down the sewers. We do want to mention, just like what we did with the Committee of the Whole meeting last week, um, we do want to mention the Rolling Meadows Business Buzz website. You can go to our city website at www.cityrm.org and click on the RM Business Buzz link, or you can go directly to www.rmbusinessbuzz.org directly. We do want to mention, obviously, um, and the city does welcome knockout prints owned by Shannon Thomas. They're located at 4007 West Algonquin Road in Rolling Meadows. Knockout prints will focus on apparel print and other official opening and, um, for the public on Monday, November 16th. And obviously, before they actually opened, they gave some samples of their items that the Economic Development Committee actually got to see. So we do welcome knockout prints at 4007 West Algonquin Road. The city also welcomes Burrito Perella Mexicana located at 2101 Plum Grove Road to the committee. They officially open to the public on Wednesday, November 18th. That is at the old Nick's location, if you remember that. And then we do wanna reiterate, as we've been saying for the past nine months, um, please shop, dine and order in Rolling Meadows. 
It is more important than ever during these times. It is significant to remember all of our big boxes, restaurants, small businesses, mom, pa stores, and everybody else during these times. And because it is the last meeting of November, we do want to mention the December that we will not be meeting with the Economic Development Committee or the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, with that, those are items of interest. Uh, thank you, Manager Crumstock. Moving on to the next item here, the October 2020 new businesses. Do you have some follow-up on new businesses for us? So we have five new businesses that opened in um, October. Do want to mention K Barbecue. They're at 1925 Plum Grove Road. They're a new restaurant, obviously. And then we do want to mention that Pizza and More Catering, which is also formerly known as Pizza Ready, just has uh, some new owners, but again, they're at 2222 Algonquin Road. But we do appreciate all five new businesses in the community, and obviously that is new businesses for October. Nice. Thank you, Manager Comstock, for that update. <clears throat> we'll change gears a little bit here and talk about the Senior Snow Removal Program for fiscal year 2020 and 2021 winter season. With that, I'm going to find out if uh, Assistant Director Charlton is ready to grab the floor. His, uh, time is yours when you're ready. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I am ready. Um, provided in your packet tonight is a brief report on the annual Senior Snow Removal Program. This program has been in effect for a number of years and uh, we're getting ready to kick it off. We did send out notices at the beginning of October to all past participants or any participant from the past who had expressed an interest to be added to the list for future years. So we sent those out. Uh, it um, requires them to provide their expression of interest and some income verification data on any measurable snowfall, and that is any snowfall with three inches or greater. The city will deploy the contractors to go out and plow for a designated price ranging anywhere from $13 at a low up to the $40 that we pay the contractors uh, for each snow event. And that amount is depending on their income verification. Uh, we do budget annually for this program. Uh, this year we have an amount of $20,000 uh, and we do take, I think up to 90 um, participants on an annual basis. And uh, if there are additional people, we put them on a waiting list or try to accommodate as many as we can. Uh, last year, we had a very light season. We only had three events that the contractors went out on. So uh, the, the budget from last year was uh, well under our $20,000 mark. And, and again, it's just something that we budget that amount and hope that, that we don't have too many snowfall events to exceed that amount. So that's our program for this year. Uh, it will begin. We had our first snow this morning. It did not measure the required three inches, uh, but we're ready uh, when, when that snow comes. Thank you, that's all I have. Nice, thank you. So long as they don't uh, shovel at about three in the morning, right? <laughs> uh, which, you know, uh, some of, yeah, some of my neighbors do. But that, that leads us to the next part, which is following up from our last conversation on noise complaints and excessively long in duration lawn maintenance. And for this, I believe Chief Nowacki is gonna be able to give us some updates on that. I uh, hope everybody can hear me okay. Yeah, uh, I did look into, we do respond to a little less than about 100 uh, noise complaints a year, ranging from all different type, loud music, could be lawn maintenance, construction too early. Uh, it is my, my recommendation based on, uh, like I said, the current volume of calls we respond to and the current ordinance does allow us to address pretty much every noise complaint. I think uh, if we try to restrict like length of time for lawn maintenance, I think we would uh, be getting in a little bit of difficulty in trying to enforce that because each situation is uh, unique and different and the homeowners do have to do maintenance on their property. So I think basically to set a set time limit for like breaking leaves or cutting grass, I think uh, that would probably be hard to regulate. And I think the best case is if uh, the neighbors can't resolve the issues between themselves, obviously they could always call the police department and we'll try to uh, mitigate that situation. 
Okay, Chief, thank you. I, I think the theme for this year should ultimately just be patience, right? I think we're all going to be very patient with all the changes that are, that are going on and uh, adapting to our new circumstance and having patience when it doesn't fit within the way we're typically used to doing something. So I appreciate the update on that. Um, moving on from there, Manager Crumstock, we have a Making Rolling Meadows Proud program. So what we have before the City Council is that as we all know, 2020 has been really an interesting year. That's my nice way. I don't want to use what many people keep on saying unprecedented. And there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of sad stories that are out there. But what this is really trying to do is taking some time and acknowledging, remembering, really highlighting positive events and in individuals who are really making Rolling Meadows proud. And all that we're really asking for is for residents, council members, businesses, any friends, city staff even, to nominate and recognize really these individuals or businesses that are really in Rolling Meadows or maybe that have helped um, Rolling Meadows. And in the write-up, I just used two quick examples. One would be a business who contributed PPPs to the police department or one resident who has mentioned a story of one um, member Rolling Meadows in our community who's crafted Zoom sessions for local children. And again, those are positives that we're trying to get out, those good news, those warm thoughts to really get people to understand and spark the positivity that really needs to be going along. And from these acknowledgements, we would have at future city council meetings, um, recognition and participants and other kind of pieces that we can do to really hold these individuals and businesses up. And as I say before, it really, I just came up with the name Making Rolling Meadows Proud, but it's one of those kind of things that I think it's one that we should be acknowledging people during this time and showing the positive and showing the highlights. Each time that we do this at a uh, city council meeting, it would be you know, motion to deviate. And obviously council members know that we've given out certificates and we've given out other pieces, but it's time for us just to acknowledge for this period of time. And hopefully we have that for a period of time, you know, maybe January, February, that we'll be able to acknowledge these positive individuals and businesses. And that's what I'm hoping the council will support and also make sure that they have people and individuals that can be acknowledged for 2020, but also 2021 for Rolling Meadows Proud program. Uh, thank you, Manager Crumstock. Alderman Cannon, I just muted your line due to some background noise, uh, but I look forward to seeing some of the individuals and businesses that help our community shine during these uh, trying times. Um, this brings us now to matters not on the agenda. Are there any matters not on the agenda? Go back to my desk. Alderman Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had uh, three things that I'd like to talk about. First one, Mr. Mayor, is I was wondering if, uh, I don't know if Rob Horn is on tonight or not. No, he's <laughs> off number this of week. Pardon me? He's off this week. Okay, maybe uh, Ms. Carlton can help me. Um, I've had a number of inquiries this week about what's going on with Meacham Road. Um, I don't know if other people have been out there, but there's they've installed a whole bunch of construction uh, signs saying the construction is going to start soon. They have horses lined up on Old Plum Grove Road right across from the high school, from the grammar school. And they got signs on almost all the off streets saying uh, construction ahead with flashing lights and everything. Is, could anybody tell us if that's actually going to happen this year or what's going on with that? I don't know yeah. if Ms. Carlton would know about that or not. She does have her hand up. She's, she can take the floor now. Joellen, the floor is yours to fill everyone Thank in on you, that. Thank you, Mayor and Alderman Cannon. I, what I can tell you is that we did, uh, Director Horn and I did attend a pre-construction meeting with the state who did indicate that the bid for resurfacing the, the road in its current format had been let and it was their intention, whether permitting to get started on that project. So. Our expectation was that they would begin a lot of the, the work on the sides of the roads and clearing and, and doing some of those preparatory work. I don't know the specific 
uh, tasks that they're working on right this minute, but we can certainly reach out to our contacts and include some of that information in the Friday report, uh, uh, which is not happening this week. So I'll, I'll send an email out to the council so that you have that information for your residents. Great, thank you, that'll be helpful. Yep. Uh, the second thing I'd just like to say uh, on behalf of the people of uh, the first ward, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I hope everybody has a healthy and uh, safe holiday season. And the last item is uh, uh, I'm announcing at this point that this will be my last meeting as sitting alderman. Um, I'm resigning my position effectively today. Um, I will be sending an electronic memo into uh, the mayor and the city clerk, and I'll have hard copies on both your desks tomorrow. So it's been a privilege to serve the people of the first ward, uh, but someone else will just have to handle, handle the job going forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alderman Cannon, and uh, thank you for sharing the news. Uh, Alderman O'Brien. I think you're still muted. Yep, thanks, Mr. Mayor, appreciate it. Just to, to follow up, um on uh, what Madra Crumstock said during some of his updates. Just real quickly on the Economic Development Committee as myself or Alderman Veneciano usually provide updates. We did not meet in November, just as a reminder, because our meeting was scheduled for election night. And then uh, the most recent communication received was, as Manager Crumstock noted, our December meeting as well as January and February are canceled at this time. So as additional information comes out, um, as we kick off the new year, we'll certainly continue to bring updates to the group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Uh, I think Assistant Joel and Charlton, your hand is just up from legacy, correct? Correct, okay. sorry. That's okay, just wanna double check. Um, are there any other matters not on the agenda this evening? Well, if not, um, then we're at the end for tonight. I wanna make sure that everyone does have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Even though it's been a little bit lousy for a year, which is definitely an understatement, uh, there are still definitely things to be thankful for. I know I can find a couple. And so I hope that everyone can find opportunities to be thankful and stay well and have a safe Thanksgiving. And with that, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Alderman Budmatz. And thank you, Alderman Diestis, for the second. <clears throat> Will the clerk please call roll? Yes, this. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Cannon. For the last time, yes. Bud Mance. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. yes. Thank you. With seven in favor and unopposed, this meeting mm -hmm. is adjourned. Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Take care. He didn't, he didn't recognize me. What am I supposed to say? You should have interjected and said, Mayor, oh, I didn't.